My name is Lara Campbell and I'm a co-founder of Artists and Angels. Uh, it is a, an art tech uh, project to foster arts and help people develop their creativity. I'm very excited to welcome our first guest, our honored first angel to our angel talks, uh, Alisa Poplavskaya. Thank you, Alice, for taking the time to join us today. Um, how are you doing, Alisa? <laughs> Dear Laura, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me for this talk. And I'm delighted to take part in it. I'm well. Berlin is a little bit rainy <laughs> and moody lately, but everything is good. And I'm very, very happy to be here in this conversation with you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very happy that you could join. Uh, thank you very much also to our participants for being here and for everyone who is, who is interested in the meeting. Um, I do have a lot of questions for Alisa today. <laughs> and would, I, I can also see that Alisa already prepared a lot of her artwork in the background. So thank you for that. We can also enjoy that during our talk. Um, so I think I will just start by asking a very simple question, Alisa, have you always wanted to be an artist? Hmm. You know, the sometimes the most simple question is the hardest. It's the hardest one. <laughs> um, no, actually I wanted to be a scientist. <laughs> when I was a child, I wanted to uh, I wanted to invent things and then I wanted to work in the as an astronomist so but it was when i was little and later when i started my artistic journey when i was nine years old i went to art school in my in the national art school in my city and i understood that actually this art education was for me an island that helped me to go through many difficulties in my life back then and um and then i understood how big is it for me, this art and creativity? But I faced some challenges there in the art school. It was too many rules for me. So there was only one subject where I could actually be free and express my creativity, which was composition. And this I loved the most. And this led me to actually different stations in my life before I realized that um, the artistic or creative channel just opened um, for me in Stockholm in 2008. Was there, thank you for sharing this. Uh, this is always um, inspiring and surprising to see how people start doing art. And especially since you, as a child, you wanted to be an uh, astronomer and uh, study other, our universe and other planets as coincides with what we talked about before. <laughs> and um, yeah. so uh, what happened? What uh, event triggered your inspiration, your um, the opening of your creativity? So um, back then, I, uh, I, I moved to Stockholm to study, to study a different sacred text. Um, Old Testament text, Kabbalistic text, text, um, mystical interpretation of text. And it was a one year program and I was part of the arts track. And it was my dream to express my creativity and suddenly this opportunity just opened up. And uh, during this year, I also met my husband in the same program. So it was a, it was a <laughs> opening for me for, on many levels, but those main, those two mainly. And I studied so much and so many things were fascinating for me what I studied about um, sacral, sacral symbols and interpretation and text and spirituality within the text that I felt actually a very big need to express it, to express it creatively, to express it artistically. And I started to transform what I felt into paintings. So that's why when, if you look at my website, there are some paintings that are very Kabbalistic, very different actually from the paintings I'm dealing in this moment. And it was a very, very big transformational year for me artistically. 
And the next step happened late in 2013 when my husband and I got married and we decided to go to volunteer to do service work for one year instead of honeymoon. We decided to do volunteering year. And we went to Nepal and to a rural area of Nepal where I was teaching art therapy methods and psychology for teachers in local schools. And once I just happened to be in one of the small villages and I've seen this little mud house completely colored with different symbols and I felt so much actually like going there and seeing what's happening and when I opened the doors of this little mud house I've seen many artists are sitting in the lotus position with little brushes in their hands and they're paint, painting mandalas in Tibetan part and art and Buddhas and white Tara. And here I am, 2008, it started with text and spirituality, which transformed into art. And 2013, I connected to Buddhist uh, village and their traditions through art and spirituality as well. And this art afterwards made me uh, feel inspired to read about this and to learn more about that. So I feel those two events are very, they look very different, but actually they're very, they're very connecting for me. And uh, in Nepal, I discovered this meditative art, which led me later on to experience art healing techniques and to guide art, art healing workshops and art healing courses and to open our first healing art school here in Berlin. <laughs> yes, this is an event that's going to happen soon, I think, right? The uh, art healing school. Congratulations on that. <laughs> uh, so maybe uh, during our talk today, you can talk more about that. You can tell us more about this um, healing art school and what will happen there. Thank you very much and congratulations. This has been a long journey. Um, yeah. Yes, so um, I'm actually I'm always curious to, about mandalas, all right, so um, and you basically had the first hand experience with them and uh, could see how they're created in the say in their maybe place of origin or at least what we believe to be their place of origin. Um, would you mind showing a mandala, mandala and maybe explaining what it is right and what what is the art, the healing art behind it. So actually, I, if, I, if I may, I have here, it's not a mandala, but I feel it's connected to the question. Uh, to speak a little bit just about Tibetan art and what tanka means, it's called tanka, it means actually spiritual message on cotton. And here, it's the first painting I have created in, um, in Nepal, and it's white Tara, which is, um, divine representation of love and compassion so it's representing energy of love and compassion and it's clearly done on cotton so I just feel like showing to people how it's really done because <clears throat> I'm doing it now differently in my school we are using aquarelle paper which is wonderful as well but actually the original mandalas and tanka art is really created on cotton which is um it takes three days to prepare and apply glue on it and then to feel that it's, you know, when it's completely strong and ready to be painted upon, then this art is created. And what is important is that everything about this Tibetan art has a meaning. It's nothing actually so much for beauty, nothing for beauty actually at all. So there is each symbol, each line, each cloud each lotus means something so just to give just a little um, impression about white tara and then i will move to mandalas so for example her hand is like on her right knee which is representing actually generosity generosity for all mankind <clears throat> for all the living beings and the lotus she's holding in in her hand, she's holding like that, which is representation of knowledge of past, 
present and future and she's holding with this gesture a lotus which is spiritual awakening and spiritual purification and there is each part means something and mandalas it's more universal um it's more universal term right in sanskrit it means circle and also means wholeness something which is complete and later on when i started to learn mandalas in nepal i've seen that there is particular techniques that I love the most. And later I learned that actually this technique was a seventh chakra technique and it was a lotus. So I will take a little, so I have now exhibition in Berlin when Liga painting, painter paintings are presented. But today I would like to show to you just a few examples of mandalas, just to make it. So this is very traditional and it basically has a very, it's very exact, you know, sometimes, sometimes people come to my courses and they say, we wanted to relax and, and it's so much patience actually, they have to measure, but after 10 minutes or 15 minutes, their mind is tuned and so much focused on those lines that it becomes a meditative time. So it's really meditation through art. And it's representing Lotus and the Lotus, which is a symbol of spiritual purification and awakening. And once, why seventh chakra? Because it's a Lotus of 1000 petals that believed in this tradition that we have seventh chakra, like a crown opening Lotus with 1000 petals. And it has eight layers, which is in Buddhism has a, um, has a deep meaning of unfold of the path of compassion. But in the middle, there is always this white dot or OM sign, which is, um, which is a sign of purification, of awakening, of enlightenment. And the idea is that everything what we look at, we should look as a roadmap. So in a way, we also start to paint from outside and we are slowly going towards light and lighter colors, meaning we are more and more connecting to our more and more enlightenment in a way, or our more and more, let's say, awakening or awareness or spiritual pur purity, I would say, till we reach this white dot in the center. So yes, this is um, general about the traditional mandalas. There's so many, there is different kinds, but I love to work with Lotus because I feel it's universal. It's really universal because everyone can connect to the inner blossoming and prosperity and connecting to your pure self. And there's something which gives this feeling um, to work on each pedal of your own journey in a way, to make each step in your life lighter and purer and more mindful. And I'm integrating this Lotus in all the, all the courses. And for example, if you see the mandala here or mandala here, they're chakra mandalas and they're connected to different chakra systems. So this is more or less heart chakra, let's say, because it has a, a one triangle in another triangle. And I love it because it's actually a very universal symbol as well. In Judaism, it's also connection of feminine and masculine and unity and um, protection. And in yoga and in, Buddha, in yogic tradition, it's a heart chakra, heart center, energetical center which is the main center of love and compassion. So I love it. And what is important here to understand that through this art, we connect not only to artistic um, experience, but we really connect to those energies because where we stream our attention, this is where our energy goes. And if we take two days and we stream our attention towards spiritual purity, this is what we invite into our life. This is what I believe in. 
<laughs> Thank you very much for this uh, introduction and excourse into <laughs> the world of mandalas. Uh, and thank you very much because I was uh, myself, I was always, now I understand that I was uh, um, feeling them out or drawing them incorrectly because I always started from the center and I went outside, outside. But now I know that you have to start from the, uh, the go basically go the other way around. So thank you for that. But, so that you did your, everything right. You did everything right because it's very good that you mentioned it because now we talked about traditional art. We talked, talked about um, our mandalas are used for temples, for homes, and for in order to become part of this meditative process. Right in Tibet, they do it with sands, with sand, and they do, and they put everything into water to make us feel that everything is changing and shifting, and there is. We have to just accept it. Um, but actually in healing arts or in art therapy, on mandala art therapy based on Carl Jung, this is how it starts. It starts exactly from the center. Uh, from uh, Based on the German psychologist, I think Carl Jung, yeah? Okay. Uh, yes, I think he was sweet. Uh, uh, okay, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, Carl Gustav Jung, he was psychotherapist. Right. And um, and he he was very interested in mandalas and this mandala art therapy method started with him because he believed that when we draw mandalas intuitively we actually can connect our unconscious and most of the psychology methods are and psychotherapy is actually to a man to bring something from subconscious to the conscious and from conscious state of being, we can release things or let go or just to be aware or shift them, we can work with them. As long as they sit in some subconscious, it's like an iceberg, we cannot do much about that, they're just there. So it's very therapeutic, very healing. So you didn't do it, you didn't make any mistake, you did everything right. You just looked, you just took another approach and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you i definitely have to attend one of your courses to learn other ways and other approaches thank you very much so when we speak about this uh, uh this creativity right and this connecting with this uh creativity in this process of uh, in this case we talk about painting right or drawing uh, when where does your own inspiration and creativity come from like how where do you draw on that how do you feel that how can you describe that oh that's a good question that's a good question um to be honest for me it's a pure spiritual journey so everything what i feel or transition or what i discover more and more about myself and about energies. This is what comes into my art. And um, so I guess my main connection is divine. <laughs> as simple as that. And then, and I believe that everyone has this channel. Everyone, actually everyone, it's like everyone a healer. Everyone is an artist. Just It just takes time to to unfold it within yourself if you want to unfold it. So, and uh, for me, it's a really spiritual practice. It's like prayer in action. And there is some things that I do consciously and some unconsciously. So when I do things consciously, for example, to bring more positive energy into, into some of the aspects in my life, I do it. Uh, there are paintings, uh, I have some paintings about sacred union that I, oh, I don't know, maybe also can show you. There are some paintings that are connected to the femininity and to our inner blossoming as women, because actually I believe that we should really blossom <laughs> and uh, bring more light into this world. I yeah, actually, I just show some of your artwork here on your website. So that we can see this was right, right. 
I can speak, of course, about each and every one of them, but um, as you as as you speak and you describe your your own personal connection and uh, but um, I'm more curious, uh, I guess, in um, like, do you usually see the uh, the images with your say some some eye some some hidden eyesight, you know, obviously. Um, I think the neuro neuro uh, linguist the uh, neuroscientists they say that we see uh, visions uh, with our the back of our head actually that's what uh, that, that's where the that that part of brain uh, is located that's responsible for that so uh, uh, this is more of a question I think so I see. I see things sometimes during meditations, and especially when I meditate with someone, it's very interesting to see what's rising. I have one painting that was created when I meditated with my mother, and it was very, very special. Um, I'm not sure it's uh, on the website doll. Um, but I can bring it <laughs> for later. And what I see, I see colors and I see visions. Um, and um, then I will, I'm allowing myself to develop them during the creative process. So we are not talking so much about mandalas because mandalas, they therapeutical mandalas, it's always very intuitive journey. It's intuitive drawing. So whatever comes, so usually I don't see anything. I just allow my heart or my uh, intuition communicate and use my right hand as an instrument for that. And when we are talking about paintings uh, like this one, for example, this I had a very clear vision and very clear feeling of energies about around me. And then I asked myself, and if I had to, if I had an opportunity actually to paint how I feel to be hugged by someone beautifully and without seeing anything, so just, just to feel different energy. So, and this artwork, for example, was created and it's called The Way I Feel You. Mm -hmm. So, um, and sometimes there is a lot of inspiration comes from my dreams as well which I, I have very clear, clear visions <laughs> every night. And uh, yeah, something from interacting with different people, feeling them, not only seeing them, but feeling them energetically as well. So it's... Um... Mm -hmm. I see here, for instance, uh, I, think, I think this is a very uh, good example of, uh, of a mandala painting, right? What are your typical instruments for mandala painting or just for creating your artwork? Uh, what instruments do you need for that? Mm -hmm. So this was a course when I was teaching Tibetan mandala um, course here in Berlin. And uh, you can see here, it's a typical Nepali brush. It's a natural brush, which is there on the, on the paper. And it's a natural minerals based paints that I could find only in Nepal and India. I tried many paints here in Berlin and um, it's not the same. It's not the same, that's why I'm ordering them from Nepal. And uh, with uh, traditional painting, I'm teaching usually with natural mineral based paints from Nepal and other paintings um, or intuitive painting we are using, I'm using oil and acrylic, professional acrylic, sometimes with different pastes and mixed media. So it depends where actually inspiration takes me. And when I'm guiding therapy sessions, art therapy sessions, we are working a lot with pencils because they're earth element and the earth element helping us to work with fears, for example, to release anxiety and so on. And with watercolors, which is a water element, which, which helps us to connect to our femininity and flow, yeah, creative flow. And um, yeah, 
Maybe no balance. <laughs> I will stop sharing for now. Yeah, thank you for that. That's uh, that's truly a, a very inspirational artwork that you have on the on the website, and everybody can go and see that, of course, on your website, right? Uh, it's very interesting. You mentioned this uh, this phrase of um, uh, that everyone is an artist. Actually, uh, this is exactly our slogan for our project: that everyone's an artist for artists and angels, and that's what we want to uh, inspire people to become an artist, to find the artist within themselves. Um, do you have, or maybe you have had for a long time, an artist that you have admired who? maybe has been a guiding light for you in your life or someone that you truly admired, let's say. In your life or in, on, or in art, both? You know, it's... Uh, so I love Mar Mark Chagall because I feel that um, he's going beyond uh, beyond the rules and he's connecting to divine through his paintings and helping all of us to connect um, to I find very spiritual motives uh, through his art. I love a lot uh, Salvador Dali uh, because I think this man definitely had images <laughs> very inspiring and um, I find his art very spiritual as well. And there are many, to be honest, because I see this is from famous figures mostly. And um, maybe because I, I was actually thinking about Mark Chagall a lot, I was invited to exhibit with his artworks here in Art Center in Berlin. It was young artist and Mark Chagall. It was a big honor uh, just to, to have my painting next to his paintings, which was beautiful. But what I'm actually really fascinated is to see this artist in every person and so many people come to my session and say at least I cannot paint I cannot draw I cannot do that and then when they discover their creativity they are folding them through step by step to different instruments I'm using you can see how their eyes are shining there's you know it's like heart opening experience and this is truly inspiring for me so to see strengths and um, artists in each and every one who comes. And it doesn't matter, it's the person who came in order to release some emotional blockages and to use it as an art healing instrument or someone who wants to learn about Tibetan art or traditional art or mandala therapy. It's, we are approaching the same thing just from the different perspectives. And it's the most that's why I do what I do because I see people I love when people shine when they create and when they discover this divine creativity within them I feel it's uh, I um, accomplished my mission for this day <laughs> well, may there be a lot of uh new starts and new little suns that uh, you inspire and you help release in each and every one of us. Um, speaking of that, maybe you uh, want to say a few words like exactly um, about your healing school that uh, will be soon opening in Berlin, right? And how, how can actually art help us heal ourselves, right? And especially in this transitioning times right now. Yes, thank you so much for asking. So the school is called Mandala Compass uh, Healing Art School Berlin. And the, it will be mandalacompass.com. Next week will be available. And at the moment, all the workshops, they will be via Zoom and online so people can join all around the world. And the idea is to actually educate uh, future art healers. So people who want to experience and to go deeper and to connect to themselves on a deeper level using different art and mindfulness instruments. 
and also for people who are actually willing to help others and to guide others, to facilitate workshops, art healing workshops, to facilitate and guide one-to-one -one healing art sessions. And since I'm also a yoga teacher and mindfulness coach, I'm combining all that because I believe that it's all really connected. It's all really um, brings unity once we connect to our mind, connect to our body and express ourselves creatively. And um, yes, so this will be for people who want to start this journey, but there will be also an opportunity for those who would like to have maybe mindfulness art and meditation retreat online or anti-stress workshop and mindfulness um, workshop online. So those who would like maybe to invite people to connect uh, more mindfully, meaningfully. I have people who come from, they didn't see each other for five, 10 years and then friends connect through our art healing sessions. And it's just beautiful because people change, people change. And I believe that in our world, especially for us as women, I'm talking uh, because I'm a woman, I, I know this only from this perspective, this lifetime at least, we want everything. We want to be accomplished as women, we want to be accomplished as professionals, we want to be accomplished as um, on so many levels, as healers or someone who is nurturing our children, our husband, our family, or there's so many things. Sure. To yeah. Yes, we want, to, we want to take it all, but um, I feel this healing art, it's exactly helping us to go deeper and to say, take time for yourself. Discover what is inside. If you want to understand from what you want to grow or what do you want to transform, allow yourself to do it, to release fears, to release anxiety, to release stress, to unlock shame, to unlock guilt, to let go of guilt, to let go of grief and allow yourself to take those tools to work with it because we are so helping the world right we are helping to everyone but we also should know and should have instruments how we can actually help ourselves in this um, not easy in the moment situation for most of us and i believe in those instruments and i know they work and um, i'm happy to share them Thank you very much. I think this is all much needed for all of us. Um, and in the remaining time that we have left right now, um, I wanted to ask you maybe to um, to send some nice thoughts for us. <laughs> I wanted to ask for to do a, a short meditation session, but I think we, we have no time left for that. So um, maybe just with the clinging of a Tibetan bowl would be nice to end it. And I want to thank everyone who has joined us today. And please uh, feel free to send your questions to Alisa directly to her profile. Please um, follow the, um, the websites and uh, the Facebook pages. Um, also on Instagram, Alisa's school will be available. Um, and please uh, stay tuned, stay healthy and safe, of course. Thank you. And thank you so much, Elisa, for being here today, for sharing your experience and uh, good luck on your path and good luck for your Berlin Art Healing School. Thank you so, so much. I'm sending love and blessings. Please, dears, explore your creativity. It's divine and it's beautiful and it's needed. Love and blessings to all of you. And may this Tibetan bowl send blessings to you. Thank <laughs> you.